everyone, welcome to Coffee with the Googler. I'm here with Sebastian Thrun, uh, founder of Udacity, and I wanted to just hear a little bit more about the announcements today in the keynote. Can you tell us uh, and, and share with the world what everyone's doing, what you and your team are doing at Udacity? Yeah, we're really, really uh, pleased to see that Sundar took the time to talk about our new nano degree. That is basically a way to bring education to the world, to democratize education. Google, a wonderful 14 great instructors at Google have teamed up with my startup company, Udacity, to bring education to the entire world, including Egypt and many other places. Awesome. Where did you get the idea for Udacity? Because you used to be at Google, right? I, I used to be at Google. I was a mid-level manager in Maps and eventually made it into Google X and founded Google X. And then at some point I realized one of the most important things we have to do is to provide education to people. Not just information, not making just the world's information accessible, but about making the world's education accessible and democratize, democratize it. So I, I took time out, I started Udacity, and we have, I don't know, more than four million students. Uh, we're doing fine. That's really awesome. And is the education primarily focused around developers, or can you share more about the breadth of the offerings that Udacity has? Yeah, so the Android Nano Degree with Google that we announced today, which is built and undersigned by, by Google, by Peter Lobos and his team, uh, really teaches people to become Android developers. So if you take the education, you get an another degree, you should be able to find a job in the Valley or in the world. And in the Valley, we pay for a good Android developer easily $100,000 or more in salary per year. So it's really meant to find people a job. It's project-based. You do many projects. You do much less lectures. Uh, there's some classes, but they're optional. And it's one of the many nano degrees we've launched. We launched uh, five other ones. Uh, I hate to say in iOS we have one. <laughs> no, but we I, also I, have cool too. data I mean, engineering you know. and programming. And they're all around computer science, so all the kind of stuff. The kind of stuff that we teach is what the type of people would like to hire. Yeah, and, and I think that's a game changer, right? It's like bringing more people into the industry and having this industry knowledge really helps more people come into our industry faster. Because I know that the next 20 years, we're gonna have, we have so many jobs, and we're going to need them filled by amazing people around the world. Yeah, and, and this is the kind of stuff. I mean, I, I'm a former university professor from Stanford. And this is the kind of stuff we can't really offer at Stanford because it is so bleeding edge. I mean, we, we announced a new feature here at Google I.O. and we already have a course online where you can learn how to program this. Um, that speed cannot be matched in academia. Yeah, and, and so can you tell me, so this nano degree program from, is it free, is it, does it cost money? Can you tell, like, if I wanted to sign up today, what do I have to do? Do I have to have some background experience? How do I get started? So first of all, it's free. Udacity's mission is to democratize education, and we can't democratize if we charge money. So anyone in the world can study all the content for free and do even the projects. However, to become really good, you want our feedback, you want services, you want mentors, you want code reviews, you want, you want some engagement. And these things cost us money, so we charge money, and we charge $200 a month. Google has very graciously, in, in Egypt, just offering 2,000 scholarships for students so that students can get those services and still study for free. In terms of prerequisites, um, if you've never programmed before, don't try it. It's too hard. In fact, we have a little test there. Maybe, maybe become a designer. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, take, a, take a different nano degree. Became, do, do programming first. We have a whole bunch of those. You can start at the very beginning with Audacity. But Android is really meant to be a, kind of a proficient, top-level Android developer, the same way Google would hire internally. And so you, you touched on, and we kind of talked a little bit about how Udacity is going to help drive job creation. I heard uh, when I was talking to Peter backstage a little bit about this career summit. Can you speak to what the career summit is and some of the goals of that? Yeah, that's um, totally cool. Um, Laszlo Bock and his team at Google have decided <laughs> they're going to invite 50 of the top Android finishers for a nano degree over to Google in November, all expenses paid for a multi-day summit where we do a hackathon and you meet Google recruiters and possibly a few of them find Google jobs. So that's a, a great motivation to the students in the world to sign up for it, but it's also a great sign that Google is willing to really consider alternative credentials. In this case, it's own nano degree, alternative to conventional college credentials. Yeah, and, and so it's not even that this is going to be a long-term goal. This goal can be accomplished this year. It's going to be accomplished this year. And, and think about what's at stake. Like, how many people we have in the world who would, don't like their job, who can't get good education? Like the entire Middle East, for example. Um, my friend Tom Friedman uh, talks about that he believes if there's good education in the Middle East, there'll be fewer terrorists. Think about mid-career people, like we have stay-at-home moms to turn into software developers. We had a professional golf player who became a data analyst, right? Yeah, These kind of awesome. shifts don't exist today, and in this world course, we, we need paths for those people. If we do this, we could be, humanity could be twice as productive. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and so you spoke about the Middle East. I know that your team has also been working with Google to enable even uh, more educational opportunities, specifically in Egypt. Can you tell me a little bit more and our audience a little bit more about what's going on in Egypt? So, so Google, Google has a really great working relationship with the Egyptian government, and so do we by association. And Google has decided to put, um, to translate um, several courses that we jointly built into Arabic, end to end. So a non-English speaking person could still study and become a top-notch software developer, Android developer, and so on. And um, on top of it, Google is putting in um, study centers, uh, job centers, and stipends for students to take those materials. For me, it's great because I'm, I'm passionately following the, the sad news of the Middle East every day and the entire Arabic Peninsula. Um, I, th I, I truly believe if we brought good education to that specific part of the world, there'd be alternative pathways for people to get rid of their energy and do something productive. Yeah. And picking Egypt is a great, great launching pad because Egypt is relatively stable, has an extre extremely talented and inspiring uh, population, and has a actually a huge number of women in technology yeah. that I just learned, which I yeah. think is really important to bring more women in technology. Yeah, so as I was mentioning, so I work on the Women Tech Makers program here at Google, and my role is to increase the visibility, community, and resources for women in technology. And I think so often we don't hear of all the amazing women globally that are in the technology industry. Um, and so specifically when we're thinking of uh, the Middle East, so Arabic is first. Have you guys started thinking about what countries you might go to next? We have translated uh, various classes into up to 40 different languages when it comes to subtitling. But the, the narrative is still in English. Um, we are currently um, took investment from Japan, from uh, Europe, Germany, and from Brazil. Um, we are very heavily contemplating China at this point. Uh, and we have a huge following in India. Uh, Udacity is an international platform. Our students are mostly from international countries, from all parts of the world. Um, and, and that's our mission, to be yeah, global. And when I was talking to even some women yesterday, we were talking about how, so it's like in order to, I think, really increase the, the participation and the graduation rate from these courses, I think what's really powerful about what you're doing is this end-to-end -end translation. Because I think sometimes subtitles aren't enough. Like the more that we can have natural language speakers actually teaching these courses, it makes it feel not just for women, but I think for people of, of any nation to have it feel like it was made for them. So I think that's a really cool aspect of what you're doing in Egypt. And so I, uh, yeah, I was telling you a little bit backstage, so I had the privilege to bring together a four-woman team to create the, the new Android for Beginners course. That's wonderful. And so it's that, those are just the women that are specifically at Google. There's also a whole team at Udacity. And our thought was, how can we bring any, anyone anywhere, regardless of their background, into the Android ecosystem? What are your thoughts around how anyone can jump in and participate? Is it starting with Android? Where do you think they should begin? I think, I mean, I, I think online education is not to be underestimated in its power. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's easy to box people. I don't want to box anybody here. But I've heard some of our female students voicing, look, we feel less intimidated than in the classroom with like 90% males that are all kind of super smart and raise their hand and make us feel slightly inferior. Um, it, it gives much more privacy and much more ability to, I mean, you can watch the same video 50 times if you want yeah. and so on. Um, it's, it's also cultural. I mean, to me, I mean, programming Android is, is sexy. It's, it's interesting. I mean, you reach what, uh, how many billions of people at this point? There's 1.5 million new devices unlocked every single day. How can you possibly be heard more than if you become an Android programmer? We have 3.69 billion unique mobile accounts in the world. There's half the world is on mobile. 81% is Android. Um, I think we should just all move into it. Um, and we should take, let, leave the old stuff behind. If you're being told you can't do it because of race, ethnicity, whatever, intellect, gender, sexual orientation, that's all wrong. Just do it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time, and congratulations on the announcement Thank today. Thank you so much. <laughs>